I'm going to do survey results I did an exploration of the knowledge and perceptions of students and lecturers and clinical facilitators <coughs> on the use of mobile devices to integrate theory and practice um, using Google Drive and Faith is going to share personal experience on the use of technology in an undergraduate nursing program. Now in 2010 I was a, a clinical coordinator in our, in our department and what, what we experienced was whenever I had meetings with clinical facilitators who worked in the clinical practice, the one thing they would say is that students find it difficult to integrate the theory that they get in class with the clinical practice. And this brought me to my research on how can we help students to do that integration. And the one thing that came to mind was technology because as you can see, everybody's using technology in some or other format. So um, that is where my research started and my, my journey my journey with, with, with the e-learning platform started with, with, um, with Norina, um, Norina Braf, and I'm sure by the time I'm done with my research, she will be grey. And then eventually we had to get Carolyn as well to come and help. Um, because we, with my research, we found that our students, the clinical facilitators, the lecturers needed help. They needed guidance, they needed training. So we drew on the specialists to actually come in and to come, to come and help and to do the training for us. We are now at the, in the position where our head of department would write an email to say, Juliana, our staff needs this training. And I would just write an email to say that we need this training and Norina would be on the other side. And they would respond and actually come and facilitate the training in our department. So that is how it all started. This is just talking about the pedagogy of um, introducing um, mobile technology. I will skip that one. Now, if we look at the survey, what I had to do with the survey is I had to determine where our students were, where the clinical facilitators and the lecturers were, um, with the use of mobile devices and the use of mobile applications, and also looking at which applications they were using, um, looking at um, will they use their mobile devices for research and, and, and for the specific particular module that we were focusing on. Um, so I had to do a literature review, and from that literature review I drafted um, a survey um, using Google Docs. So I worked in Google Drive um, to, to, to draft the survey and I, I'm fortunate as a, as, a, as a student, as a research student, to be part of an emerging technology um, group and in that group there are specialists in the field of mobile technology but also on emerging technology. So the fortunate part of that is that I've got access. So I could forward the, the, the survey to, to expert reviewers and they, they, they made their comments, they, they made recommendations, I could act upon that, I could send the survey for editing, and after that we could implement the survey with, with the students, the clinical facilitators, and the lecturers. But prior to that, prior to the, to the, to the implementation, prior to the implementation of the, of the survey, we, I put um, Tantana Lab. This is a mobile technology research study. But we also had to determine what the students had available, what lecturers or educators had available. So what I did is I booked in Tana Lab because I did not know how many students have a mobile device. I did not know what type of mobile device they had. So I had to determine that first before I could progress with my, with my research. So I booked in Tana Lab to accommodate the students and there was such a big group. Um, we expected 117. We ended up having 84 students in two groups in Tantana Lab. Um, so the first thing that we did, and this is where Norina came to help, we assisted the students to create a Gmail account. What we found when we were busy with, uh, with the piloting of the survey, we found that if you just send it to a UWC email, if you don't click on the link, you will, you will complete the survey and then it throws you out and you have to start all over again. But if you, if you, use the, if you do it in Google, then in your Google email, then in Gmail, then you just click on the link and there you go. So we preferred sending it to students and to the other participants using a Gmail account. So we helped them to create Gmail accounts for those who did not have and there was quite a lot of students who did not have a Gmail account. Um, we completed the survey and, you know, as research, we started with our information session. Um, they, I sent them the email and this, this was where it became difficult because I did not have a group prior to the implementation of, of this, of this um, survey. So once I got the, the um, email address, I could send it to them. 
And it took them about 30 minutes to complete the survey, some, some even faster, completed faster than that. And the same we found, now this is just, this is just a snapshot of what the survey actually looked like. And, and the nice thing about this is, as you will see later, is this is free. It is free. Um, if I had to do Survey Monkey, I actually had to pay for the program to do Survey Monkey. And with this, I was able to teach myself how to use this in Google Drive. You can see there, you can see the link, the blue. You can see the link that I that they were sent, and they all they just clicked on the link and they were able to complete the survey. This is just some of the some of the just showing you what our responses look like. Because remember, when you when you do um, a survey in Google Drive, you get immediate responses. The same the same I did with the with the lecturers and the clinical facilitators. It's just that I now actually had the postgraduate lab in the department, and what we found is some of them use their laptops to complete, some of them use their mobile device, and some of them use the, the actual desktop that was in the computer lab to complete the survey. Um, I had a total of six um, between the lecturers and the clinical facilitators that completed the survey. And the same as with the students, those who did not, did not have a, a, a Gmail account, we helped them. And we, we managed to help just one prior to the session. We managed to help one to just establish a Gmail account. And this is just some of the responses that we had um, from the clinical facilitators. I started with, with biographical information and then just goes down to all the other questions. So this is just to show you what it looked like. And I think some of the results for me was interesting um, to see what students had available. Um, they had basic phones, they had smartphones, and they had laptops. This was important for me to see because I needed to determine what do they have to help them with the integration of theory and practice. I had to look at the time when students use their, their, their mobile devices most, and, and the same with the, with the lecturers and clinical facilitators, and most of them indicated that um, at any available time. I had focus group sessions with these students, and, and some of the discussions that we came upon and some of the ethical um, issues that we had to clear out is, when in the clinical facility can you use your mobile device? Can you use it in front of a patient? Um, what are the policies of, of clinical facilities? Uh, around using mobile devices, so those are some of the challenges. Just from this, we could we could discuss this further in our focus group sessions. And also, um, the application that is used by students, mostly what's WhatsApp and Facebook. Um, and then in our focus group session, we had the, the contradiction to Facebook again, where students said that um, I don't want anybody to see in my private space um, what I'm doing at school. In, in this one, the applications I'd like to use, um, especially with lecturers, is everybody came up with email. And the nice thing about Ecamva is, whenever you load a resource, whenever there's an announcement, they get the email. So this is like the answer to our problems because they get an immediate email when, when you load something for them. So seeing that they prefer email, we can incorporate the learning management system because they will receive the email to update them on what is happening on the, on the system. The type of mobile devices that educa educators use, they've got the basic mobile phones, they've got smartphones, mini tablets, laptops, they are so advanced above the students. And, and we always think that the students are more advanced than the educators. This is just for lecturers and educators, the times that they allocated um, when they use their mobile device most, it was between 12 and 2, after 4, and obviously um, some said um, any available time as well, mostly any available time. Mobile applications used by educators, they're using Facebook, WhatsApp, and obviously um, BBM, BlackBerry Messenger. Now the value of using Google Drive, and this is, this is for me and for my study. It was free, it was easy to complete, um, the survey. Um, it just took time, but it was easy to complete. It was easy to distribute, because you can just select who you want to send it to, and there it goes. All right, um, and, and the nice thing is when you, when you want your data analysis, it is there, right in front of you. The only challenge was it was time consuming, as I've said before, and it doesn't analyze, an, analyze qualitative data. Your qualitative data will just sit there in front of you, and, and you must now decide how you're going to analyze this data. But the quantitative data is analyzed immediately for you. And I'll hand over to Faith Peters. <laughs>